uh, they don't listen to world opinion. Uh, they, they, are, they are assisted instead by the big powers. And so they carry on. The change that is going to take place is an escalation of the internal conflict uh, in South Africa. And it will come because instead of changing the constitution uh, so as to accommodate the just demands of the majority of the people, they are changing the constitution to perpetuate the status quo. The resultant development from that is, of course, continuation of armed struggle and in South Africa. <clears throat> uh, it's going to be as violent and as bitter as it has been anywhere in the world, I think. Uh, that is obvious from the hectic preparations that are going on uh, under orders from um, Minister of Defense throughout the country. At homes, in townships, their townships, uh, at factories, in small dorps, in towns, in the farms, hectic preparations, which, of course, ensure this escalation because they are predicated on the knowledge that the oppressed are on the offensive. A clash is coming. Now, therefore, the, the changes in the Constitution <coughs> uh, will escalate the situation because those changes simply fortify and consolidate the status quo. So whether you have forced out a border, uh, uh, as long as the system persists, changes take place in the direction of the escalation of the conflict. Uh, Mr. Tom, I'm George Mokumi from Zambia Daily Mail. Uh, you've just said that uh, developments uh, in Namibia are bound to have a significant impact on uh, South Africa. Uh, now, what would you say uh, is your organization's view on the uh, current developments in uh, Namibia, namely the holding of the sham elections? <coughs> yes, the holding of the sham elections. <coughs> well, if we needed one more example to demonstrate who our enemies are in this struggle, the fact that there are sham elections taking place in Namibia today provides such an example. How has it come about that in complete defiance of the unanimous positions of the Security Council, the United Nations, elections are taking place in December. How has that come about? It has come about because <clears throat> the Namibian people are confronted with throwing the foster regime out of their country. They agreed to talk, which is always a good thing. <clears throat> they agreed to talk. Five Western powers appointed themselves as the, uh, yes. But there were not five, there were six. South Africa is part of that five. So SWAPO was negotiating with itself on the one side and the group of six on the other. That is the reality. So they went to Pretoria and agreed that these elections should take place. Agreed with their ally. That is the reality of this. 
And we must not be deceived about who is our friend and who is our enemy. If we are deceived, we'll go wrong. <clears throat> this, these elections, <clears throat> which are a, a kind of an abuse of the willingness of the Namibian people to cooperate. Any Namibian, of course, Swapo has stated its position, but even the few who are being bullied into, into participating. Uh, it, they are a kind of rehearsal. It's the only elections I've heard of in the world where after the elections, nothing happens. You don't have a, a national assembly. You, you have presumably members of parliament, but they go nowhere. There's no cabinet. Nothing happens. The colonial ruler carries on until April. So what are the elections about? They are a rehearsal for any elections that may be held before. They are an argument for the six for further negotiation. All aimed at displacing Swap. 